Hey guys, and welcome to the second episode in this series of creating apps in Unity. If you haven't seen the first video, I'll leave a link in the description. Make sure you check it out because it gives the background as to where we are currently, as well as an overview of what we're aiming to achieve in this series. In today's video, I'm going to give a brief overview on using the canvas in Unity to create your app interface and UI. And this is something you should be familiar with, whether you're creating an app or even a fully fledged game. After that, we'll take a quick look at the app loop and flow of the production app we're going to be iterating on in the upcoming videos. Okay, so in Unity, I've just created a simple 2D project. I set the build settings to Android. And this is something that I recommend you do uh, immediately, straight off the bat. I've made the minor mistake before of only setting the build settings to Android after I've built my base app. And the rejigging Unity does can sometimes throw things out of line, which for a big project can take some time to fix. So if you know which platform you're building for when you start your project, which hopefully you do, set the build settings in Unity out of the gate. Next, if you need to, go ahead and set the aspect ratio. I like using 16.9 and for this app I'm going to be staying in portrait mode. Now we right click in the hierarchy and under the UI menu we add a canvas. Everything that's going to appear in our app, all the text, all the buttons and anything else is going to be on this canvas. I still haven't figured out why the canvas is so epically huge compared to the actual game view with the camera. But fortunately when building an app it actually doesn't matter that much and we can just work entirely on the canvas. Very importantly, because I'm building my apps for mobile, I need to make sure that the canvas scales with the phone screen size, and we also need to set a reference resolution. Finally, the default value that's given here isn't the recommendation that you can find in the Unity docs online, which is 640 by 960. And after searching forums, it seems there are different preferences here. I set my reference resolution to 360 by 640, and that seems to work pretty well for me. Now I create a background for my app by simply creating an image and dragging it to fill the entire canvas area. I do recommend taking a look at some websites out there that can uh, recommend some nice complementary and appealing colors to use, particularly if you're not artistic, which I definitely am not. But for this demo, I'm just going to use a familiar shade of light blue. Now that I have the background, I'm going to add my other UI elements as child objects to it. Um, you don't have to do it this way but I have had some random issues before with buttons not showing up and the layering being a bit weird. And I've just found that by making the UI elements children of my background element, I don't have this problem. For the app title, I'm just going to use a text element, but I do prefer to use Text Mesh Pro and find my own funky fonts to use instead of the standard default fonts. Uh, if you guys want more insights on Text Mesh Pro and a basic tutorial on how to set that up, let me know in the comments. But for now, I'm going to assume that everyone is familiar with that. I think that the text editor in Unity does a pretty good job as far as creating decent app text and titles go without the need for you to have to use expensive graphical software to create custom images. And once you've got your text at the right size and in the right color and moved up to the right place, remember to make sure that you anchor it and all the other UI elements that you create correctly as well. Anchoring will keep your buttons in the right places when the canvas scales up or down on different phone screens and resolutions and prevent them from disappearing or overlapping. Now I'm going to add a single button just to highlight how these work as far as apps go. Like the title, the button has a text component and you can customize that to look how you want it to in terms of the size and color and font. And once we've got our button ready, we're just going to go ahead uh, and hit the play button to see how things are looking in our app. Okay. We can see that the button is sort of working. We can click on it, but it's not doing anything yet. So how do we make the button do stuff? When we go into the button inspector, we can see this on click event, which essentially executes methods that we create in code to make our app do whatever we need it to do. So in the hierarchy, I'm going to go ahead and create an empty game object. And on that game object, I'm going to add a C sharp script. I've got one ready to go. 
For now, we'll just create a simple scene loader to move us between scenes. We're going to take that C sharp script and drag it up and onto the scene loader game object that we've created. And as soon as C sharp opens, we can go through the code. It's just a simple couple of lines of code here. We start off by making sure that we're using Unity Engine Scene Management. We can get rid of the start and update functions. And then we create our load scene method with these two lines of code. So first we declare an int variable called current scene index or whatever you want to call it. And we get the active scene from the scene manager to build out the index. We then use the scene manager to load a specific scene. And the scene we want to load is going to be the current scene, which is scene zero plus one, uh, which will be scene one. Back over in Unity, I'm going to duplicate my main scene to create a second scene and then I'll go and uh, rename it. Once I'm done with that, uh, we'll just go into that scene and update the UI a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that button over there. And then in coding 101 fashion, we'll update the app title to read hello world all right are we all set not quite uh, we go back into the button and down to the on click event and then we take our scene loader and drag it into the source and on the drop down menu we're then able to find our load scene event so by setting it up accordingly, when I click on the start button, it's going to run that method and load the scene. But in testing it out, we're getting an error message and we're not loading into the next scene. And that's because there's one critical thing that we've forgotten to do. Over in the build settings, we need to make sure that both of our scenes are added to the scene hierarchy. We make sure they're in the right order. And you can see the scene names there as zero and one. So let's try this again. And there we go. The app is working. So that's pretty much five minutes to build a Unity app. It's not too difficult. Now that we're done with that, we're going to move back to uh, the app that I've already built. And fortunately, the app that we're going to be working on is something that I've spent considerably more time on already. And there's a little bit more to it, thankfully. So now let me take you through the basic app loop. Okay, so as I explained in the first video, I have an app on the Play Store already called Multiply, and it's a simple multiplication and times table reference app that has a test mode. So the way the app flows right now is that we have a menu screen where you first open the app, and that lets you either do a multiplication test or go and learn your tables. If you choose to learn, you get to a tables menu where you pick the table you want to learn. And if you choose to test yourself, the app jumps straight into a 25 question test where all of the questions have been painstakingly pre-built. Once you answer the final question, a full screen interstitial video ad is played, which you can skip if you really want to. And then you get taken to the end screen where I give you your score convert that into a percentage and based on how well the player has done uh, I use an if then statement to select an appropriate message to display so you're amazing well done or you need more practice and so on so what I'm looking at changing in the next release is as follows from the unity analytics that I've been reviewing I can tell that the app is being used by a handful of people every single day but in the last week or so, I only showed two or three ads, which to me seems to indicate that very few people are actually doing the test mode and are rather making use of the tables reference. So I'm going to try and troubleshoot that by looking to add a banner ad on the app menu screen. And if this theory is true, I should see a substantial uptick in the number of ads displayed in a given time period, even if I maintain the same number of active users that I have. Next, I want to do a better job at providing test coverage. So I'm going to expand from one test uh, that I have currently to three tests and cover way more combinations of questions. And that'll also mean that I'll be adding two additional interstitial video ads at the end of these new test sets. To try and encourage people to beat the game, I'm also going to use uh, player preferences to store a high score. 
And on the times table screens, I'm gonna try and add some simple navigation arrows to make it quicker to blast through the different table scenes. Finally, I'll be looking at Unity's custom events to see if I can add a couple of uh, events to more easily understand how people are using the app. And I think that'll be it for this version of the app. Uh, but if you have any other ideas that you think I should include, drop them in the comments below. In the next video, I'll start working on the first new set of features. And the focus is going to be on creating the high scores for the new test sets. So if you're still here and you're keen to see how to do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.